Hey, Doc Jones here from the Home Run Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. We were just doing a live YouTube webinar, and I, I think there was an EMP or something bad happened, and the whole thing shut down. We finished the presentation, uh, but I was just starting with the questions, which is the fun part. And so, you know, people have been writing questions through the whole presentation, and so I didn't want to have you not have those answers to your questions. You're nice enough to hang around and write questions. And so, um, and and if you didn't get to write your question, put it in the comments of this, and I'll I'll answer those too. Okay. Anyway, we're just going to go through the questions and 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 answer the ones we can. And appreciate your patience. And sorry about the EMP. And I hope you have enough food storage because apparently it's now the apocalypse. Right? Anyway. <laughs> All right. So where were we? Um, okay. So. Billy Bird was asking, what's recommended for sharp joint pain? Okay, so, and I was saying, and I don't know when it turned off, but I was saying that for pain in the joints, there's several things you can do. You can uh, go the dandelion route and clean up your blood, right? That'll decrease pain because it decreases inflammation because it's, your blood's cleaner and stuff's not precipitating into your joints and irritating them, right? That's the first thing to do. So dandelion, burdock, yellow dock, you know, things like that that are cleansing are good. The next thing you can do is you can do some anti-inflammatory herbs like, I don't know, turmeric, which works way better if you take some ground fresh black pepper with it, by the way, or yucca or things like that, right, um, for anti-inflammatory properties. Um, the other thing you can do is you can take herbs that decrease nerve pain by calming the nerves. Those herbs are called nervines, right? So skullcap, valerian, things like that. And you can take a combination of those things. We have a formula called joint support at homegrownerbless.net that has a combination of those things that works very well. I have in my veterinary practice, you know, a lot of dogs with arthritis. I mean, all the old dogs are gimpy, right? And uh, if almost without exception, they're just on the herbs. They're just on that joint support formula. I've got a handful of them that are bad enough that I put them on some medication too. You know, but most of them do okay on the herbs. So, um, so there you go. There's also things you can do topically. You can use, I have a formula called Rest Easy, uh, and I have a formula called Pain Away, P-A-N-E-A-W-A-Y, all one word. Those can be used internally or topically and they're strong nervines. The pain away has some antispasmodics in it too, which you can also use, right? I forgot to mention that one. Decrease muscle spasms, decreases pain. Anyway, you can use those topically, the, the pain away and the rest easy, and that'll make things not hurt. Um, sometimes, depending on what's causing the pain, we have a, a device on the website called the Resimax Tuner. If you just do a search for tuner, you'll find it. For some kinds of pain, that's extraordinary. Not everything, it depends what's causing it. But I would probably focus on the joint formula first, see what you get there. If that doesn't do it, if that's not enough, uh, you might look at the rest easier, the pain away topically or internally for a little more uh, action on the pain. That's probably what I would do, There's those things. All right, okay, what's next? Uh, Diane, Diane Wilson says, we have false dandelion here. I don't think their medicinal value is the same as the official one. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Uh, it's got to be a, a real thing. Although some of the cousins of dandelion have similar, pro similar properties. We talked about uh, chicory, right? Being almost identical medicinally. And their flowers are blue, of all things. So, Okay. Shelly says, I love your humor, Doc. I'm so glad. I'm glad you're having fun. Why do if it if it ain't fun, right? Okay, um, Genevieve says, very cool, since dandelions are so prolific, they should use those to make rubber now. Yeah, that'd be good, wouldn't it? I don't know uh, how fast or inexpensive or effective that is, but it's probably better to make dandelion, make rubber out of dandelions, which are a renewable resource, uh, than out of petroleum, which we may run out of someday, and which is uh, much stinkier and smokier, right? I don't know. Maybe we ought to all be making dandelion rubber. All right. Um, Mary Howard says the white stuff tastes terrible. Yeah, later. <laughs> 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 
True story, the latex is not yummy. Okay. Um, Patricia says it stopped playing, which is right. That's the bad thing that happened. We're fixing that. Um, Gia says, I'm eating the leaves of dandelion right now in my Mike's Mighty Good Craft Ramen. Good girl, Gia. That's great. Uh, she says it's really good. Every day I try to get wild edibles in my diet like this one. You know what? That is so important such an important principle to get wild edibles into your diet why why is that well it's because the food that anyone's growing commercially almost isn't food anymore you know there's and, and I'm not beating up the farmers at all at all okay but they only got the dirt they got okay and and over the decades a lot of the micro minerals and micronutrients get depleted from that dirt you know and they're putting every year three chemicals on it you know they're putting you know phosphorus and ammonia and or nitrogen and phosphorus and what's the other potassium or something anyway you know they're putting those three on and that's great it makes the plants big and pretty and you know grow good but it's not replacing you know the manganese and the beryllium and the whatever other weird thing you can think of that should be in that dirt you know and, and when you eat wild edibles that are growing out in wild, crazy places that get tons of compost and naturally from the animals and from the other plants breaking down all around them and, and that aren't getting over harvested and overworked and overused dirt, it's, it's different. The nutrients are different. The other thing is that we've bred a lot of the nutrients out. You know, it's not just that the dirt's not as good. It's that we've bred out of the plants things that don't taste good. And a lot of the most important nutrients don't taste that great. You know, if you poked your kids in a time machine and took them back 200 years and had them have dinner with Henry VIII, you know, they would be begging you to come back to 2021 so they could eat some nice tasting Brussels sprouts. Okay. Because <laughs> everything used to be a lot more bitter and a lot harder to choke down. And guess what? A lot more nutritious and a lot more medicinal. Okay. So some of it's also selective breeding to make it pretty and sweet and big you know we bred a lot of the food out of it so yeah good for you Gia, for eating some eating some wild edibles every day that's a great idea okay all right uh mary says i am 168 feet above sea level so the cc's and the grams are the same <laughs> there you go had a girl <laughs> we can fix this metric system <laughs> All right. Um, somebody says, this is Comedy Gold. Have you shared this edu educational webinar on your social media yet? So, yeah. If you can, do that. Go tell your Facebook buddies and your Instagram buddies and all your other uber webby wacky platform buddies that you saw that they could learn about dandelions if they wanted to. That would be fun. All right. Kirsten says, so you harvest the roots in the fall or the spring or the summer? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. They'll be a little stronger in the fall. Um, but they're great anytime. It doesn't really matter very much with dandelion. Okay. All right. Paul says, hello from Orlando. Hello, Paul. Um, Pat says, it's because of the glyphosates. Yeah, that's true, too. The, the Roundup and, and a lot of the pesticides and insecticides are also getting into the commercially produced food, you know? And so that's that's also not good for you, right? And it inhibits celebrities, inhibits the plants from doing some things they gotta do. And your body's gotta process all that toxic garbage, you know, which is bad. And again, I don't wanna beat up the farmers because I love the farmers. I've never met a farmer I didn't like, you know? I mean, I've known a lot of farmers over the years. And I was watching a video some time ago, what was, it was called King Corn, I think. It's a YouTube video. It's, a net, it's on Netflix or somewhere. I don't know where I even watched it. Maybe it's on YouTube. Anyway, it's called King Corn. It's worth watching. And it's about corn and high fructose corn syrup and how it's going to kill us all and it's in everything, right? So it's a, it's a video that sort of says high fructose corn syrup isn't good for you, which it ain't, by the way. Uh, but anyway, at the end of the video, there's this farmer and he says, you know, we'll grow whatever you want. <laughs> If you want organic Brussels sprouts, buy organic Brussels sprouts and we'll grow them. 
But right now, you're mostly buying high fructose corn syrup because you want cheap, cheap food that's sweet, you know. And so it's not their fault, is what I'm saying, that, that there's so much of that in our food. It's supply and demand. It's consumer demand. You go to Costco, they have mountains of organic stuff. How come? Because their customers told them they wanted it. And so now they have it, see? So, you know, be a little bit vocal about what you like and what you want and what you want to put in your body. And there's all kinds of farmers that'll be just happy as clams to be organic and grow things, heirloom seeds, and, and not use this product or not use that product, not use Roundup or whatever. They'd be delighted to do it. It'll cost a little more money. And if you'll pay for it, they'll be happy to do it. So make your voices heard and make those choices. You're the ones, as consumers, we're the ones driving that market, okay? Okay. Kirsten says, can we have a recording of this webinar? It's going to be on YouTube forever, okay? And if you're in the school, it'll be in the school forever, along with all my other ones that I charge money for. Those are in. Okay. Yeah, Evan says, yes, we're recording it. Okay. Uh... Genevieve says, I love listening to you. You're so funny. Your wife must be in stitches from constant laughing. <laughs> My wife's an angel. One of the most remarkable people in the world. She's great. She's a midwife and she's an herbalist. Have you noticed that I have circles in my eyeballs? Isn't that fun when I wear my glasses? That's cool. Anyway, Lori's a birthlight midwifery. She's, she's a midwife and uh, extraordinarily brilliant at that job. I mean, wow. If I was having a baby, that's where I would go. After I did all the interviews on television about being the only guy that ever had a baby, I'd go have her do the baby. She's really good. All right. Um, Wendy says, I've been eating dandelion leaves for years. My dog also eats the leaves, and she likes hackberries. <laughs> there you go. Well, the leaves and the roots are just as good for your dog as they are for you. So good. All right. Gia says, I hope I'm saying that right, Gia. Maybe I am. When it comes to healthy bacteria, there's a word going out that ciprofloxacin, an antibiotic, is killing people. I wonder if that has to do with how much we need bacteria and it is harming them. I don't know. Yeah. Got to be really careful with those big gun antibiotics. And you know why we have those big gun napalm bomb antibiotics? It's because we've overused all the other ones. We've overused them for dumb things that didn't need an antibiotic. And do you know why we get bacterial resistance to antibiotics and we get very rarely get at bacterial resistance to herbal antibiotics? It's because a pharmaceutical antibiotic has one chemical in it and an herbal antibiotic often has a dozen, see? So it's harder for the bacteria to figure out what the heck's going on and it's harder to get resistance. I can't tell you how many MRSA cases I've cleared up over the years with our silly bug buster formula. Bug Buster. It's just a bunch of herbs that are antibacterial. There's nothing magic in there. And I've had a number of cases over the years of serious MRSA infections that they couldn't do anything to fix. And they slap a Bug Buster poultice on and take it internally, take some immunity support internally, and it goes away. Because it's just a bacteria. Right? It's not resistant to Barberry and Calendula and Oregon Grape and all these other crazy guys that have 12 things in them. Right? And there's 12 of those herbs in the formula you know, garlic and chaparral, all these complicated guys, and they all come out swinging and the bacteria don't know what to do with it, right? So anyway, modern medicine is a wonderful, amazing thing. It's an amazing thing with amazing tools. You know, I would be dead if it wasn't for modern medicine. I ruptured my appendix a couple of years ago. I don't have an herb for that, right? I had a brain tumor a couple of months ago. I don't have an herb for that mostly because it wasn't malignant. Those are harder to treat <laughs> with herbs. Herbs like malignant tumors. They don't like benign tumors. They don't, they don't, they think those guys are nice. They don't hurt them. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, if it hadn't been for, you know, brilliant qualified guys with a really sharp knife, I'd have been in big trouble, you know? And so I have all the respect in the world for doctors. I, the brain surgeons are astounding what they can do, you know, and all the other guys too. But, but, the, but the problem is that the pharmaceuticals are being used too cavalierly. They're not doing what they need to be doing with diet recommendations. They're not using natural herbal supplements and, and resources like they should. And so they got some big problems. They got some big problems because they want it to be absolutely uniform. 
they want it to be so that they can hand they have to have it be because the way the system is they have to be able to hand the case off to the next guy this is my little thing i do this thing and i have to be able to hand it off to the next guy and not have him scratching his head and saying what the heck is oregon grape right he has to know exactly what i did and i have to know exactly what he did and and i get that i get that you know otherwise the combine doesn't work right but i'll tell you it's very sad I've noticed because I've been to some doctors lately right and the old guys that are over 40 years old are still being doctors with their head they think about things they think about the individual case they think about the individual problem they think about the individual more and a lot of the young doctors unfortunately are coming out of school and they got their nose on a computer screen and it's like they're going through a flowchart you know and they have no idea what's going on with you. You know, I, I one of the guys recommended that I get radiation for this tumor that I had, this benign lump that I had in my head that isn't cancer. And, you know, they grade those scale things on a scale of one to five, and the ones hardly grow at all, and the fives grow enough, they worry a little. You know, mine's a two, so it sort of grows a little, but not a lot, right? And so I was, you know, talking to a radiation oncologist in Salt Lake and he said you need to get this done and we're gonna use this x-ray technology that blasts your brains with x-rays every day for six weeks and he says about 40% of the people that we do this with it wipes out their their pituitary gland but don't worry we have a pill for that and I laughed out loud I says you have a pill to replace everything the pituitary gland does you know I said I was at a conference in Salt Lake for three days a couple of years ago. And I had six or eight people come up to me, I'm an herbalist, and ask me if I had anything that could help them because their thyroid glands were gone. And did I have an herb that would replace it? Which I don't, right? If it's gone, I don't have one to make it happy if it's not there. And every one of those people said that they had a little lump or a cyst or something on their thyroid gland. They went into surgery and the doctor, the surgeon, instead of taking the little lump off and sending it to the pathologist and waiting a half hour to see what the guy said and come back, they just took the whole thyroid gland out and pitched it in the bottle to send it to the pathologist because they got a pill for that. And now you got these six or eight people, plus how many other thousands that weren't at that meeting and came and talked to me in the country, who are on a pill for thyroid hormone that doesn't work for them. And it works for a lot of people. But for a lot of people, it doesn't work at all. So now they're living without a thyroid gland and their life is a disaster. Because somebody had a pill for that. You know, it's just ridiculous. You know? And so, anyway, I'm talking to this radiation oncologist who's saying that, you know, there's a 40% chance my pituitary gland will get wiped out. And he was staring at the screen the whole time like he's looking at a flow chart. Like, you've got this and you got this, you got to have that. Right? And then I called my brother who in addition to being my brother is a brain surgeon and is, you know, almost 60 years old. How old is he? Oh, holy cow, he's, I'm 57. He's 66, right? So he's an old school doctor. And he said, well, there's other techniques we can use that are way more specific if we even want to, but I don't know that I'd do anything with that tumor, right? Because he's been looking at him for years and years and it's a case, and he looks at all the data. He doesn't just look at the thing growing in your head, took it out with a knife, now we blast it with radiation. That's the formula, right? A, B, C, D, right? And the guy down on E has a pill for what I did to you in C, right? <laughs> anyway, I'll get off my soap crate. But I love the medical people. I love the medical profession. They're, they're amazing. But they need to regroup a little bit and, and reconsider some of the ways they're doing stuff and quit fussing about you know, the combine and start fussing about the quality of care for the patients, you know. Start looking at the big picture more. That would be good. All right. Okay. Uh, Maggie says, hello from Arkansas. I just jumped in. I found a YouTube called Gardening with Leon. We have very rocky soil and his method is really working for us. Hey, there you go. We'll have a look at that. Okay, Ben says, dandelion tea gives me a body buzz. Any idea why? Oh, wow. That's very weird. I don't know why. 
I wonder if you have an allergy. I've never heard of a body buzz with dandelion. That's unusual. I guess I'd need to know more about what a body buzz was. But anyway, <laughs> I don't know, Daniel, what that's about, or Ben. All right. Okay. Oh, and now my son says I get a body buzz from dandelion too. You get a body buzz from dandelions? Yeah, I get a, a nutritive tea that we have. What does it do? What does it feel like? Uh, it's just really, really intense, warm arms. It's like huh. a caffeine buzz, but it's not as exciting. <laughs> All right, for those who can't hear, my son Evan, the IT guy, says he gets a body buzz from deep-rooted, some of the deep-rooted things. And he says it's not, it's a warm sort of energizing thing, and his arms feel warm and he feels sort of different. He says it's not like a caffeine buzz, but it's sort of a stimulating buzzy thing. Well, there you go. Now I've met two people that get body buzzes. That's good. It's not an allergy, Ben. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. Gia says herbs are the best antibiotics in my opinion. You know, I've had a lot of cases in the vet practice. I, I just sold my vet practice. Um, and, and until I got the brain surgery a couple months ago, I was still working for the guy that bought it for me, which was great. I loved that. <laughs> I like clocking in for a couple hours and clocking out and not having to worry about it anymore. But anyway, um, <clears throat> he needed the help and I didn't mind doing it. But anyway, uh, anyone know what I was talking about? Oh, antibiotics. I've had a lot of cases over the years where antibiotics didn't help at all, didn't do anything. But the herbal antibiotics would do it, you know, so. All right. Okay. Shelley said, God gave us what we need. It's mentioned in the first book of the Bible. You know, isn't that the truth? Okay. And I'll tell you what, you know, <laughs> I wrote a little poem. It's in the, it's in the front of my weeds book. Um, and it talks about how, you know, Adam got kicked out of the garden. Bring that over here and I'll read it. <clears throat> it's in this really good book called The Homegrown Herbalist Guide to Medicinal Weeds. Let me read you the poem I wrote. <clears throat> I'm getting hoarse. All right. It says, God first made a garden where Father Adam dwelled, and from which, when he displeased God, he found himself expelled. When pain and sickness came, he learned that God's love still was true, for thorns and briars and noxious weeds are all a blessing too. So, <laughs> anyway, the weeds are often more medicinal than the tasty, pretty stuff. So even when they kicked that poor rascal out of the garden, all the weeds and briars and thorns were, were helping him too, so that's good. All right. Um, okay, Path. Where are we at? Okay, Elizabeth says, is dandelion safe for cats? Absolutely, safe for anything. Anybody can eat dandelion, any species. Won't hurt them a bit, unless they're allergic to it or something. Uh, Sylvia says, how do I get the PDF he has mentioned? which is me, I mentioned that. Uh, if you signed up for this webinar through homegrownherbalist.net, you'll get it automatically because we've got your email, okay? You'll probably get it tomorrow or, or the next day. If you haven't signed up and you're watching this on YouTube later, shoot me an email at info at homegrownherbalist.net, info at homegrownherbalist.net, and we'll send you the PDF, okay? So if it's on the slides, you don't have to write anything down. Okay, um, Path to the Future says, yeah, the Nervines get you going for sure. That's right. He also, he or she, I don't know if Path to the Future is a he or she, says, I can consume dandelion root, but not the leaf for whatever reason. Great stuff, though. You know, everybody's body's different, and different things affect us in different ways. Um, you know, my, my wife loves to have vegetables for breakfast. I make her vegetables every morning for breakfast. Um, but there's a lot of vegetables I can't eat in the morning or I get a belly ache. But I can eat them any other time. You know, so I don't know. Bellies are weird sometimes. Okay. 
All right, some other people are answering Sylvia's question, so I appreciate that. Nora says she couldn't get her dandelions to grow. Holy cow, where do you live, Nora? <laughs> That's terrible. Sad news. Um, I keep trying to plant them. Maybe the soil's too wet or too acidic or too dry or something. I don't know what's going on there. They're pretty easy to grow. Okay. Ben says that the herb buzz is a warm, fuzzy, soothing feeling, but not tingly, if that makes sense. Is that what yours feels like, Evan? Yep. There you go, Ben, that's what it's doing. It's probably improving your circulation and exciting your nerves. All right, uh, Elizabeth says, cats often have kidney and bladder problems. Is dandelion safe for cats? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. Ben says it's very relaxing, so that's good. His herb buzz is relaxing when he eats deep-rooted, nutritious herbs. That's good. Uh, Sylvia says, I didn't sign up, just saw the link on Ray Dumphy's website. So glad I did. If I get my email here, can I get the PDF? Just send me an email, PD and Sylvia. Send me an email. Info at homegrownerbliss.net and I'll send it to you, okay? Who's Ray Dumphy? Ray Dumphy, I'm going to look at your website. Thanks for putting this up. I really appreciate that. And if any of the rest of you, if you have a blog site or a Facebook page or anything, boy, I'd be grateful if you put this up and let people know about what we're doing. That would be a real blessing. Okay. Um, Maggie says, I haven't tried the tea, but now I think I will. Thanks. Do you use green leaves? Yeah, yeah, you want the green leaves. Okay. All right. Trying to make my mouse work. Okay. Mary says, Sylvia, be sure to check out the Homegrown Herbalist School. Yes, do that. Thank you. Susan says she's loving this. Thanks, Susan. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. I'm so glad you guys watch and learn and share and teach me stuff. You know, I tell you, I've never in my life, and I know some stuff about herbs, I've never in my life talk to anybody about herbs for more than 10 minutes or so and not learn something really cool from them. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to learn. <laughs> in fact, I was out in my driveway with a Cub Scout a couple of years ago and uh, he was doing some merit badge or some Cub Scout badge. I don't even remember what it was, but he had to talk to me about, I think it was for the veterinary stuff. I don't remember. But anyway, I told him I was an herbalist too. And we were, I was kind of showing him around the herbs and how I use the herbs for the animals, you know. And there was this weed growing in my driveway. And he says, do you know what that's called? And I looked down and I says, I don't know what that's called, but I got a whole back pasture full of it. He says, I don't know what it's called either, but you can eat it. And he yanked it out of the driveway and ate it. <laughs> and I yanked it out of the driveway and ate some and it was delicious. It tasted like radishes. I went and looked it up. It's blue mustard. It tastes really good. So you can even learn stuff from Cub Scouts if you pay attention. We've made him a professor in the school. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, ben says, I take the herbal tea from the health store, roots and leaves together. The tea is strong and dank. There you go. Shelly says, me too, Susan. I love this man's wisdom. He makes it easy to understand and he makes me laugh. I'm glad. You know, there's a lot of big, fancy, dumb words we could use, you know. And I went to doctor school for eight years. I know all the big fancy dumb words and I can talk like that and nobody knows what you're talking about. And I think that's one of the problems. And you know, herbalists do it too. It's not just the doctors. You know, herbalists use all kinds of weird herbal language that nobody understands unless they went, you know, an herbalist and went through some big program. You know, they talk about coligogs and amenagogs and you know, all these crazy terms. You know, if it's a liver stimulant, why don't you just call it a liver stimulant? You know, <laughs> nobody knows what a colagog is, right? And I think the reason they do that is it's kind of a barrier to entry. You know, it, it makes it, I don't know, I think it's silly. I think uh, let's speak English and people will know what you're talking about. That'll be good. I find my clients are much more compliant with my instructions if they know what I'm talking about, right? And my students are much more able to understand the material if I use regular language. So that's why we don't talk funny. But where there is a lesson in the school called learning the lingo where we'll teach you to talk funny if you want to, okay? But you don't have to. 
<laughs> All right. Susan says, yes, he's so funny. I wonder if he drives his wife crazy. Absolutely. Yes, I do. Most of the time. <laughs> but she laughs a lot, too. She's fun. She's funny, too. All right. Sylvia says, thanks. I'll send my email. Okay. And check out your classes. Yeah, I do. We'd love to have you. All right. Shelly says, she's sure I do drive my wife crazy. That's a little bit true. But she likes me anyway, and she's almost got me well-trained after 35 years or however long it's been. Okay, Sylvia wants to know if it's being recorded. It is. It'll be on YouTube. Um, how does this affect those who have no gallbladder, Susan says? Good question, right? It's a gallbladder. It's a bile stimulant. It's a liver stimulant. It makes more bile. What, is your, what do you do if you don't have a gallbladder? Well, the good news is when they took your gallbladder out, they didn't take the pipe out that runs from your liver to into your intestine. They just took the pump out. Okay. So the way it works is your liver produces the bile and some of that goes into the gallbladder so that when you eat food and your gallbladder hears about it, he squeezes, unless you're a girl, and that's it's a she. Girls have girl gallbladders, of course. She squeezes and that shoots more bile into the gut. And so if you take dandelion and you don't have a gallbladder, it'll still increase bile production and bile flow. So you'll still have more bile going into your gut than you would have otherwise. Um, but it doesn't, you know, you don't have the pump to pump it, but it'll still work. It'll still help you. All right. And I would try herbs first, by the way, if you have gallbladder trouble, because they often fix it. All right. Sometimes they don't. You got to find the guy that can help you, the doctor guy. Okay. Um, yeah, so it'll be on the YouTube channel. We mentioned that. Um, Kleinerote Hex. Klein, Kleinerote Hex says, Dandelions, the flowers I rejoice over every spring and the plants I eat root, leaves, stems, and blossoms pretty much all year round. Well, the blossoms peter off after the first huge flush, but... She, I love them, bitter or not, raw, fresh, out of the ground, tinctured, vinegared in a tea. The old leaves for bitters, they make my, they go in my salads anyway. Good thinking. <laughs> Good for you. I, I love that. That's perfect. Eat the dandelions and eat stuff that doesn't taste good because it's probably better for you than if it did taste good, right? The old bitter dandelion leaves probably have more medicine in them than the little green sweet ones. Okay. Good work. All right. All right. My mouse is doing weird things. Okay. Um, Mama Grizzly says, dang, I need to start eating dandelions big time. Yes, you do. That would be good for you. Um, Shelly says, it all goes back to the Garden of Eden and what God gave us. Our diets are what's killing us. And sadly, a lot of that's true. A lot of that's true. Shelly says, bingo, Doc. Oh, good. I'm glad you got bingo. Someone give her the $5. Uh, the rest of you were playing bingo, weren't you? I hope so. All right. Um, <laughs> Hippocrates. Yeah. Tracy Jones. Perfect quote. Let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. Okay. And it used to be that a lot of the vegetables were medicinal and were used medicinally. If you get into Chinese medicine, I took a lot of Chinese medicine uh, in my life here and there and uh, sometimes from very nice Chinese guys anyway they have a whole other modality of food therapy you know they do the acupuncture and the tuina and the cupping and all these other things and the herbs of course but they also do the food you know if you've got this problem with your chi they want you to eat this or that you know I mean it's and I think 500 years ago that worked. I don't know if it works as much now because the broccoli isn't broccoli anymore, you know. But anyway, it's really interesting. Okay. Um, Neola says, hello, hello, Neola. And Sherry from California is here. Kelly says, how would you preserve the sap if you wanted to use it for warts? Or could you use the dried powder with the same effect? Also, would the sap cause a reaction in those sensitive to latex? Those are good questions. I've never tried to preserve the sap. I have no idea. I've just always used the fresh plant. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I guess you could bleed the plants and collect the sap and store it somehow. 
you know, you could probably dry it into little white rubber crystals, you know, and add a little water to it, I guess. That would be very, very labor intensive. I would just deal with your warts in the spring and summer. <laughs> it's okay to have warts in the winter. Don't worry about it. It's only in the spring and summer we need to treat those. Okay. Oh, and, and about sensitivity to latex. Um, people ask me that all the time, and I say be very careful. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I know that if you get on the internet or you talk to the doctors and stuff, they'll say, stay away from the latex. And that's, I mean, that's probably good advice because I don't know the answer. I don't know what would happen if you have a latex allergy, which can in some people be life-threateningly severe. Let's not eat the dandelions. There's a million other herbs that do a lot of the same things. You know, there's always somebody else. If there's an herb that doesn't work for you or that you shouldn't use because you're allergic or sensitive to or it does goofy things to your brain, don't take that one. Take one of the other guys. There's, there's a lot of herbs. We could have had very similar webinars tonight about a dozen different herbs with, with very similar properties. You know, so it doesn't have to be dandelions. Take burdock. Watch the burdock video. I did one of those a couple of weeks ago. Very, very similar in a lot of ways. In some ways better and in some ways not as good, depending on what you're doing. But 99% of those two kids, they're buddies. They do a lot of things together. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I tried to sign up, but my computer and I weren't speaking and it didn't work. <laughs> Can I email you to get the PDF? Yeah. Yeah, just send me an email, info at homegrownerbos.net, Tam, and I'll be delighted to send that to you. Oh, Evan said that too. He's smart. Uh, Millie says, hello, Doc. I love dandelions. They help lessen the pain of migraine. Right? There you go. There you go. We talked about the flowers being good. For some people, the whole plant's probably good. Migraines are funny. You know, I, I wrote an article a couple of weeks ago that you ought to read about migraines and about learning things and getting information. Um, the article is called How to Learn That One Magic Herb, I think. But if you go to the blog, go to homegrownerbalist.net and go to the blogs, and there's an article that the word magic is in the title. Just do a search for magic, and it's not about magic. Uh, but it, it's how to find, anyway, it's about how to find one amazingly effective herb for what's going on with you. Uh, anyway, and there's a story in there about a lady that I recommended lemon balm to for migraines, just out of the blue. You know, and I, I, I didn't, you know, it wasn't something that I had ever used or done or learned about, but that was a very strong impression I had, and it changed her life, you know. And so, if the dandelions work, don't work, try lemon balm. <laughs> Because since then, I've recommended it to a lot of people, and it's helped a lot of people. So, there you go. Okay. Um, Genevieve says, does it work on skin tags also? No. No, it doesn't work on skin tags. Uh, just tie a little thread around those or something. That'll kill them. Um, <clears throat> Mama Grizzly says, I'd imagine if it's decreasing your absorption of sugars, that would help inhibit cancer as well. Yeah, Absolutely and heart disease and diabetes and, you know, arthritis and obesity and a hundred other things that are wrong with 21st century Americans. Absolutely. Okay. Mary says he sure does know what he's doing. Sometimes I do. Not always. Um, Susan Swink says this is an amazing pretty plant. They're cute, aren't they? Warrior Remedy says I love dandelion bouquets. There you go. <laughs> All right. The King's Daughter says, people who understand both dogs and plants are rare where I live. Yeah, that's too bad. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I do do personal consultations for veterinary cases or human cases. If you can go to homegrownerbalist.net and there's a button there somewhere, just do a search for personal consultations. And we can talk about a lot of things. You know, I don't care if it's, if, if it's a dog, you know, we can do it. Or if it's a... You know, I, I had two practices for years. I had the veterinary practice and the naturopath practice. So if you're a dog, you went to that building. And if you were just sick as a dog, you went to the other building. But we'd work it out either way. So if you got something wrong with your dog, we can do a consult. If you got something wrong with you, we can talk about it too. So have a, have a look at that offering. Okay. Genevieve says, there's no dandelions here. Very surprising, but not a one. Karen says... Thank you for sharing your amazing knowledge with us. I love all the information you provide. Karen, you're very sweet. 
like I said, there's a lot of knowledge out there. I, I did have the brain surgery recently to remove that big lump so that I could have more knowledge, more room for knowledge. Mostly grandkid names is what I'm putting in there, but I am putting a few more herbs in, so that's good. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of other great teachers. There's a lot of other great people. And my students are great teachers. You know, I have students that are doing classes and little workshops and stuff, and they get on the forum. One of the other things about the school that's really cool is we have a student forum where you can get on and ask all your crazy herb questions. And it's not just me answering those questions. You know, a lot of the students that have graduated a long time ago and been practicing herbalists for a while and are brilliant, smart, creative, beautiful people, they've got great answers for stuff. You know, so we're there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of people that know good things. I'm glad that that I'm able to teach you things, and and I'm glad I'm able to learn things from people like you. So that's that's a neat thing about life. Okay, <clears throat> um, Gia says they don't like the heat down south. Oh, okay, that's why the dandelions aren't growing. There you go. They'll grow in your house. <laughs> Put them in a pot in your windowsill in your house. They'll grow great. All right, or buy some from us. We're growing them. We got them. HomegrownHerbalist.net. We got all kinds of dandelions. You can get the powder, you can get the tincture, you can get the leaf, you can get the root. You can get the tinctures of the formulas, you can get the simples. We got any any kind of dandelion you want, we got it. If you can't grow your own. Okay. Um, Mary says, where can you look up what drugs interact poorly with herbs? Um, there are some good resources. A lot of them are very, very technical, language-wise. Uh, so there, you know, it would be hard for a layman to dig into that. Um, we, I'm right now, as we speak, uh, getting ready to produce a module in the school on that specific topic, where I'll get in depth in English about what drugs you don't take if you're taking dandelions or ginseng or calendula or whatever. We'll do all the herbs and all the drugs that, you know, that we can think of. Um, and, you know, that'll be part of the school very soon. The other thing I'm doing right now is I'm creating a line of formulas that pregnant ladies can take and women that are lactating, nursing babies can take. Um, because most of the formulas, most of the herbs you can't. Um, and my wife's a midwife, and so she's forever sending people over. And I have to create a new formula every time <laughs> for these nice pregnant ladies that shouldn't be taking calendula and yarrow, you know. And so, anyway, we're working on that too. So that'll be another set of modules in the school is what can you take when you're pregnant and what can't you take. Um, but that pharmaceutical thing, that's a big subject. I mean, I, I can't do a YouTube video on that. You know, that's, that's a big and so we'll do we'll do um, we'll do that in the school. So, all right. Um, the king's daughter says, "How can we educate city ordinances on the benefits of dandelions?" <laughs> That's right. Tell your tell your city people that give you the grumpy, nasty grams about your weeds in your yard that you're growing medicine and leave you alone. <laughs> All right, Susan Swink says, chicory is pretty too. I love the roasted chicory root. Isn't chicory the cutest bug? What a beautiful plant. And it's interesting that it's a little bit heat sensitive. And so and when it gets hot summer, in the spring it's, it's up all the time. But when it starts getting hotter in the afternoon, all those pretty blue flowers close and go away. They don't want to be in the sun. And then in the morning and in the evening, they'll open up again. So if you're looking for chicory and it's, it's really hot. You got to go early in the morning or in the evening or you'll never see the stuff to find it, you know. <laughs> anyway, really a cute plant. All right. Um, Kelly says, awesome webinar as usual, Doc. I appreciate that, Kelly. You're sweet. Um, Genevieve says, if I did find some dandelion seeds and planted them, would it be okay for my ducks to eat? I have ducks, a duck farm. And they roam freely around the yard, surrounding my house, eating the bugs and plants. Absolutely. Anybody can eat dandelions as much as they want. Okay. It's a super important nutritive for deer, for bunny rabbits, for all the rodents eat it. Um, 
ducks, chickens, anything you got. Dogs, horses, pigs, aardvarks, penguins. Anybody can eat dandelions. Perfectly safe. Okay. Goats really like them. Um, Mary says, I have both books and enjoy the school. And we enjoy Mary. She's really, she's a midwife too. And she's a really sweet person. Um, that's the other weird thing about the school is if you interact with me at all, I get to know you and then I really like you. So that's fun. Um, <laughs> Gia says, I used to have chickens and they loved the dandelions. That's good. Kelly says, I have both books. They're awesome. And so is the school. So glad I found Doc Jones. Kelly, I'm so glad we found you because we love being on that journey with you. We love it. It's a really happy, fun thing for me to get up in the morning and help people learn fun stuff that'll help them. That's the coolest life in the world. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. So you guys are all a blessing to me because you let me do this fun job. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, now we're getting the sad stuff. Jordan says, I just lost the feed. Oh no. Um, and Evan, the IT guy, said, it just crashed. We don't know why. YouTube crashed and I don't know why. But anyway, that's why we're doing this video, to answer the questions. Um, <laughs> Kelly says, oh dang it, it was too much good information and the system couldn't handle it. <laughs> that was probably it. <laughs> probably if the computer snooped in and says, he's talking about dandelions? <laughs> Shut him down, let's go to something important. <laughs> All right, Daily and Daily says, loved it, thanks so much. God's amazing, I love learning about the plants he's created and their uses. Thank you so much, I'm praying for you. Thank you, Daily, I so appreciate that. Um, all right, and then just other folks saying thanks because that's when it died. So, all right, anyway, there you go. There's the answer to the questions. If you have other questions, um, you can put them in the comments of this video or the other video, I don't care, and I'll answer them. Okay, because that's what we're here to do is answer questions and teach you stuff and help you learn things. And half the time you teach me stuff and that's fun too. So we like that. So anyway, this is Doc Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. If you would like to, earn, to learn herbal medicine from somebody that's been in the trenches for 30 some years as a veterinarian doing things nobody gets to do with herbs, like treating rattlesnake bites and gangrene and gunshot wounds and all kinds of stuff, uh, come have a look. If you want to learn herbal medicine from a guy who's been a nature path for a number of years, that's another good reason. If you want to learn herbal medicine from a guy that's going to charge you a tenth of what he ought to be charging you, that's a good reason. Try that. If you want to learn herbal medicine uh, from a guy who doesn't take himself too seriously, <laughs> I know a guy that can help you with that too. So have a look. Homegrownherbalist.net. We'd love to have you in the school. We'd love to be on that journey with you. We'd love it if you like and subscribe and share. And we really love if you go to homegrownerbus.net and buy something because that makes us both feel happy inside. So they, this is Doc Jones. Thanks much for watching and for your time. Have a good night.